In this video, we'll be beginning our discussion on absolute convergence and the ratio and root tests from section 11.6. Um, so remember that so far we've just been asking if a series converges or diverges, um, but now we're actually going to be interested in um, the type of convergence. So there's going to be two types of convergence that we're going to talk about, and these types have to do with the relationship between the convergence and divergence of a sum of a n and a sum of the absolute value of an. So these two types of convergence are called absolute convergence and conditional convergence. So just to give you a little um, sort of flow chart here to think about, if I have a sum oops, of an here, I know that this sum here can either converge or diverge. Okay. And it turns out that if it converges, it could be one of two different types. It could converge absolutely, or it could be this, this other type of convergence here called conditional convergence. Okay, so those are our, our um, different possibilities. So let's go through the, the definitions here of absolute convergence and conditional convergence. So a series will be absolutely convergent, okay? if the series, the sum of the absolute value of an is convergent. Okay, so notice that if something is absolutely convergent, that means it is also just regularly convergent. It's just a, a special type of convergence. Okay, so if we say that the sum of an is absolutely convergent, that implies that it's just convergent as well. Okay, what else does this definition mean? It means, again, that if the sum of the absolute value of an converges, then the sum of the terms without the absolute value converges. Okay, that's just another way of rephrasing this first bullet line, because if the sum of an is absolutely convergent, okay, that means that the sum of the absolute value of an um, converges. Okay. So this gives us um, a option in some cases to show that our sum of our regular ans converges if we can show that the sum of the absolute value converges. Okay, so what else does this tell us? Um, it also tells us, okay, based on the, this middle bullet point here, that if the sum of an is absolutely convergent, okay, then that's indicating that both the sum of the absolute value and the sum of the series without the absolute value, both of those things converge. So absolute convergence is our strongest type of convergence because we're getting both of these series um, must converge if that's true. Okay, so what are the other combinations here that we might need to think about? If the sum of a n converges, okay, that's the sum without the absolute value, either the sum of the absolute value may converge or diverge. Okay, so the case where the sum of the absolute value diverges leads us to that second type of convergence. Okay, so if we look at our little flowchart that I started us off with, okay, if the sum of a n converges, okay, we're going to call that series absolutely convergent if the sum of the absolute value of the a n's converges. Okay, and conditionally convergent if the sum of the absolute value of the ans diverges. Okay, so that's the, the difference here um, between our absolute convergence and conditional convergence. Okay, so we'll just come down here to a summary of that. Okay, so a series is called conditionally convergent if the sum of the an converges, but the sum of the absolute value of an diverges. Okay, so what's going to be our procedure when I'm asked, uh, excuse me, given a particular series, does this series converge absolutely, conditionally, or does it diverge? So instead of just asking does this series converge or diverge, we'll say which type of convergence does it have, or is it actually diverging? Okay, so given a series, that's the sum of a n, our first step will be to look at the sum of the absolute value of an, because the difference between absolute 
convergence and conditional convergence hinges on whether this sum of the absolute value is actually converging or diverging. So given a sum of an, we'll start by looking at the sum of the absolute value of an and determining whether that series converges or diverges. So we'll use something from our, our various list of um, convergence tests to analyze the convergence or divergence of the sum of the absolute value of an. If we find that the sum of that absolute value converges, then our original series here is absolutely convergence and we're uh, excuse me absolutely convergent and we're done we don't have to do anything else because absolute convergence means both our original sum here and the sum of the absolute value converges i also want to note um, one uh, common error here the sum of the absolute value of an okay is different from the absolute value of the sum. Okay, so we want to make sure that we realize that these are two different things. Okay, what we're talking about is the sum of the absolute value of the terms, not the absolute value of the sum of the terms. Okay, so just keep, keep that in mind. Um, if, on the other hand here, you found that the sum of your absolute value diverged, you'd have to go to step two here. Okay. So step two involves now looking at the original series itself, the sum of the ANs, and determining if that series converges or diverges. If that sum is convergent, okay, that means that our original sum is conditionally convergent, okay, because we will have shown that the sum of the absolute value diverges, but the sum of the ANs themselves um, converge. Okay, so when you have something that's conditionally convergence, that'll be the longest type of problem because you'll need sort of two full convergence tests in there, a convergence test for the sum of an and a convergence test for the sum of the absolute value of an. Um, if on the other hand you find the sum of an diverges, okay, well then obviously that means that we, we've answered the question, the sum of an is, is divergent. Okay, so we want to start with some, some basic examples of applying um, these definitions of absolute and conditional convergence and using this, this procedure. So we're going to go through three basic examples um, and we'll see some more involved examples in some later video lectures. So here I have um, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n to the fourth and I want to determine if that series is absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. Okay, so this that I have to start with is my sum of an, okay? And I know that the first thing that I want to do is look at the sum of the absolute value of an, okay? So notice that in this case my ans, oops, my ans here are equal to negative 1 to the n over n to the fourth. So the absolute value of an would be just 1 over n to the fourth, okay? So this sum of the absolute value will equal the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the fourth. Okay, well what do we know about that series? Well that's a nice um, p-series, so that, that series converges by the p-series test. Okay, since we have p equals 4, which is greater than 1. Okay, so what does this tell us? Well, we showed that the sum of the absolute value converges. That means we're in the case where we just get to conclude that therefore our original thing is absolutely convergent. Okay, so our sum of negative 1 to the n over n to the fourth, n equals 1 to infinity, is absolutely convergent. Okay, so it's nice when something turns out to be absolutely convergent because it's a short amount of work. We just show the sum of the absolute value converges, then we know our original thing is absolutely convergent. Okay, so let's look at another example. So here I've got a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n. This is actually a series that we've seen before. Um, this is the alternating harmonic series. Okay, so we already actually know some things about this series, but we'll go through our, our procedure a little bit. 
Okay, that's my sum of an. So step one, I'm going to look at the sum of the absolute value of an. Okay, which would be equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of just 1 over n. Okay, remember this is my sum of an that I had to start with. Well, what do we know about this series, the sum of um, n from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n? We know that that's the harmonic series. So this is the divergent harmonic series. Okay, so we could just say that harmonic series is known to be divergent. Or we could say, well, this diverges by the p-series test. Okay, since p equals 1 is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so now we're in the case where the sum of our absolute value diverges, so that means we have to go to step two and look at the sum of a n. Okay, well the sum of a n is our original series here, that's n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n, which we know converges. We showed this back in uh, the previous section using the alternating series test. So we know it converges by um, the alternating series test. We could also say that this is the convergent alternating harmonic series. Because the alternating harmonic series is known to be convergent. Okay, so if we have the sum of our absolute value diverges, the sum of the ANs without the absolute value converges, this means that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n is what we call conditionally convergent. Okay, whenever something is conditionally convergent, you're going to need two steps with their own um, sort of mini conclusions within them. So step one, we had the conclusion that that particular series, our sum of the absolute value of an, um, diverged by our p-series test. In step two, we had a conclusion about our sum of um, our ANs, in this case the sum of negative 1 to the n over n, that converged by the alternating series test. And then we have our overall conclusion that our original series here is conditionally convergent by what we did in our previous two steps. Okay, so let's just look at one more basic example. So here I have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, arctan n. Okay. So this is a sum of a n. I know I'll start by looking at the sum of the absolute value of a n. Okay, notice that that would be the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of arctan n. Okay. Well, what do we know about our arctangent function? Remember that arctangent looks like this. So as n goes to infinity, um, we would be approaching pi over 2. Okay, our, The arctan um, x function here has horizontal asymptotes of pi, uh, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So since the limit as n goes to infinity of arctan n is pi over 2, which is not 0, this series diverges by the divergence test. Okay, so our sum of the absolute value of a n diverges. Okay, so that means that I, now I have to look at the original series itself and see whether that converges or diverges. So now we're going to look at the sum of an, in other words, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n arctan n. Well, all that's going to change with this version of the series here is that when I look at my, my limit, it's going to be oscillating between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So it's still not going to 0. Oops. So my limit of my terms, negative 1 to the n, arctan n, does not exist, okay? Because it'll either be going to pi over 2 or negative pi over 2, 
Okay, so again, oops, our series is going to diverge by the divergence test. Okay, so this allows us to conclude um, really right here within step two where we can, like our other cases, draw our final conclusion and say, well, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n arc tan n, okay, that series there diverges. Okay, and in this last case, we actually didn't need both steps 1 and 2. We really only needed step 2. Okay, so in the, the first example that we did on this page, we only needed, needed step 1 because it turned out to be absolutely convergent. So once we showed the sum of the absolute value converged, we were done. Um, if you're able to show the sum of your ANs, just your original ANs themselves, if you're able to show that sum diverges, then you're done. You don't have to look at the sum of the absolute value. We're only looking at the sum of absolute value to determine the type of convergence. Okay. So I could have skipped step one here, but if I'm not sure, sometimes it helps to look at the absolute value. Maybe you can see what's going on a little bit easier in there. Okay. So please let me know if you have any questions on these examples.